in his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's why people are miserable. They don't have the presence of God. Hallelujah. And if you're miserable, don't tell nobody you're a Christian. Amen? Stay home, get filled, get delivered. Look in the mirror and cast out those demons. Do something. I, get, I run across many people telling me they're Christians. They're really not because they're miserable. Glory to God. God is good all the time and he's faithful. Would you turn to the book of Revelation 12? Thank you, Master. Woohoo! Are you refreshed? There ain't nothing greater than worshiping the Lord. Without His presence, there is false fulfillment. That's why when we were in the world, we were looking for everything to get high. We were looking for the most high, but we looked for drugs and alcohol and all the other things. Amen? Amen. Then Jesus showed up and took over. Thank you, Master. And truth, you know, you may know the truth, but without practicing the truth, you won't be free. That's what I see a lot of Christians out there. They know the truth, but they're not free. Because they don't practice the truth. And of course, then they don't have the power of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. And Revelation 12, 7, let's speak it together. For war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Let me tell you that war is still going on, in case you don't know it. But they did not prevail, nor was the place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who does what? He deceives the whole world. Is that still going on? Yes. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe, woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is what? Short. See, that's why you're seeing all this manifestation all over the world. They know their time is short. They're going to take out as much as they can. Even like terrorists who do suicide missions, they're going to do everything they can to kill humanity. Anything that has to do with God's creation, they will try and attempt to destroy before they are removed. And it says, so that war, that war continues to this day. And it's worse, again, knowing because their time is short. The power of his Christ is called the anointing. Amen. We've talked about this before. It's the anointing. It is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty that put on human form, came into the world to raise an army to defeat evil presence and powers, portraying to be good. I'm going to say that again. They portrayed to be good. <laughs> and establish, and God wants to establish justice and righteousness of the kingdom of Christ. Because, see, they still eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not from the tree of life. Only that can produce righteousness. So that's why you may run across many people, well, I'm a good person. Good people go to hell. Hello. The, the word says that there's a sign in front of the Entrance of eternity, justice and righteousness. Amen? So those who practice righteousness will enter. Those who do not practice righteousness will not. And it's because they're not eating of the tree of life. They're eating of the tree of the good and evil still, which is deceptive. See, you and I were called. We have a purpose and we have a destiny. And there's a label for each one. To be called means to what? Battle. We're to what? We have a calling, don't we? That calling is battle. We're to battle. We have a purpose, and that's to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible to disciple. 
Because that's what Jesus' call was. He called us to disciple. He said, go disciple them. Go raise them up, disciple them. Amen? And then arm them with his words. Isaiah 14. Verse 12. Let's speak it together, please. How he have fallen from heaven, O who? Lucifer, son of the morning. See, Lucifer was the Lord's right-hand man. He was an angel that saw all creation formed before his eyes. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was releasing God's presence all over. Oh, Lucifer, how you have fallen. How you've been kicked out of God's throne room and out of that realm. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will also sit on the mount of the congregation the farther side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like what? The most high God. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol or hell, says the Lord. The lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotting underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The broad of evil doers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children. Now I want you to know this is what's happening right now. There is a preparing for the slaughter for those who serve the devil, who sold out their souls. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the earth with cities again. So this war, this battle, is continuous. We are in it. Amen? It's called spiritual warfare. Go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Glory. Verse 11. And moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a limitation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, you are the seal of perfection. Now you know that this is not a physical king. Amen? He's talking to Lucifer, isn't he? You were a seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Why was he covered with it? Because he saw. He saw all creation. He saw God form the earth. And all the jewels and all the, everything of the minerals and everything from God when he created the earth. He saw it all. He got to wear it. Now here's the kicker. He says, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created because he was the praise and worship leader of the universe. The breath of God went through him. You were the anointed cherub. What, in other words, what do you mean anointed cherub? He was an anointed cherub. He carried the power and presence and truth of God Almighty. That's what the anointing is, isn't it? Amen. Who covers, covers the, the universe and the, or with praise. He says, I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. The holy mountain of God at that time was the earth. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones that is in creation. You, pre, you were prepared in, in your ways from the day you were created until what? Till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned because I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Now we know that's coming. Your heart is lifted 
up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities and by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you, all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever and ever. Now, we know this is coming. Again, Lucifer is the anointed chair, chair with the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. He turned against God. That's called rebellion. That's also called pride. Does everybody get it? Pride. Personal reverence into a deadly end. Pride was created by rebellion here. So we know that he is the author of pride, isn't he? Amen? Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. In 2 Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. I'm getting to the title. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians four twelve. Uh, no, one. I'm sorry. Is everybody there? Let's go. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our truth, the gospel of truth, the message of truth from God is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? <laughs> Amen. So, again, this message of truth that frees people is being blinded to individuals in multiple ways. Whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded, verse 4. Does everybody see that? Who do not what? Are you guys with me? How come I can't hear nothing? Have we got a mute spirit here or what? Verse 3, let's speak it. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who's the God of this age? Satan. Who do not believe. What's the word believe mean? Followers. A lot of say they believe, but they don't follow. God says you're a liar. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the anointing, who is an image of God, should shine on them. Hallelujah. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Yes. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. The God of this age is Lucifer, Satan, and his kingdom that blinds the eyes, the thoughts, and the heart of individuals from receiving the truth of freedom. Now, there is an area that I want to talk about. It's called full conversion. And the reason why these people haven't received this is because they haven't even started their conversion. You must reach a first conversion. Now, I've shared before that everything revolves around the tabernacle of God and the seven feasts of the Lord. According to uh, time sequences, and even in, and that's why the Lord commanded Moses to build a tabernacle. Why? Because the tabernacle was a place of meeting. Amen? And we talked about in that area where you, we meet God for an exchange. Amen? Jesus came, died on the cross to make a what? An exchange. So there's always an exchange available. When you go to the store and you buy something, if it doesn't fit, you do what? You go exchange it. So in this, we are exchanging old for new. We are exchanging sicknesses for his stripes and healing. There's an exchange process. And in the conversion, there's a constant exchange process that we go through. 
And one of the things that God is trying to bring us through, each chamber has a requirement of reach, reaching a full exchange. So you have the outer court, you have the holy place, and you have the most holy place. There's an area that we must reach for a full exchange or a full conversion. Does everybody understand? And in that, what are we doing? We're turning more and more into this image and likeness. So in the outer court, there's a place of salvation. In the holy place, there's that place of anointing. That's where you are filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. You're not filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit in the outer court. It's in the holy place. But there must be a desire to proceed and seek and find out. God says, look, at, if you don't desire to guess, you ain't getting them. If you don't desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't get it. There's got to be a desire to want things. You, the more things you want of God, the more he desires to give them to you. That's why we're to seek. Amen? Seek. Many people don't seek. They just ask, ask, ask. But they never seek out. And in this, we want to reach a full conversion. Until the first call of conversion in the outer court into the holy place is met, a conversion begins. Does everybody get that? We are conversion. The conversion of what? The converting of your soul. You're getting a new mind. You're getting a new will. Everything is changing in you. But you must cooperate with God for that conversion to continue. Each chamber has a requirement to reach a full conversion until the ability to overcome any attack from the enemy and the challenges of evil influence. Evil influence. You know, many people have hear voices. That's evil influence. Amen? Well, in that, reaching that level of conversion, you'll begin to overtake all of that. Everything. It doesn't matter what you hear. You won't follow or you won't respond to what, or react to what you hear. You will respond to what Christ says. And the more that that conversion takes place in you, the more you cooperate with the Lord, the quicker it will happen. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 3. So in this process of conversion, God brings us through all kinds of stuff, challenges. He allows certain things to happen. Remember all of your uh, challenges and trials and tribulations and things that at the degree are to expose not only your infirmities or your weaknesses or your uh, attachments of things that God wants to cut you loose for, but they are to expose your enemies. In 1 John chapter, chapter 3, is everybody there? And verse 4, let's speak it together. 3, 4, whoever does what? Whoever commits sin, what is sin? Sin is the presence of evil. Does everybody understand that? And when you, when you agree with the voice of the stranger in the presence of evil, and you, you act on it, it's called transgression. A transgression, after you act on it, brings a curse on you. That's called an iniquity. And that will come on you and your children unless it's broke. Hallelujah. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he, Jesus was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. There's no presence of evil. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Why? Because you're abiding in a place where there's no presence of evil. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Why? Because they're reaching, there's more of an exchange. You're reaching a fuller conversion, more and more and more. Does everybody understand that? Whoever sins has neither seen him or what? Known him. So whoever lives a life of sin, sin does not know him. Oh, you can say you know him. I've run into many people say, I ask them, you know Jesus? Oh, yeah, I know Jesus. Let's go have a beer. You don't know Jesus. Does somebody get it? You know what I'm saying? Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Or they have a perverse mouth or whatever. They don't know Jesus. If they did, they would have reached some level of conversion where Christ's character begins to express himself. Hallelujah. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
that word might means he's done his part. Now we got to do ours. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Does everybody get this? So I don't care if somebody says they're a Christian after they're not practicing righteousness, they ain't a Christian. They're still in the flesh. And anyone that's in the flesh will not access the kingdom of Christ. Does everybody get that? Amen. In this, the children of God and the children of devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. This is so powerful. So the Son of God was manifested in a human form, the anointing, to destroy the works of the evil and remove his followers from the bondage and control of satanic world system. And it's tech, especially it's technology and deception. Again, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception and his power is fear. Fear. Matthew 10. One hindrance that prevents an individual from converting, and I'll talk more about this, is pride. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. When a person has, got, has either backslidden in that conversion or has not reached that level of conversion, they still fight for their lives. It's not fully surrendered. Full conversion brings full surrender. Matthew 10, 32. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, whoever what? Confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever de denies me before man, him I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Now let me ask you something. Can you deny Christ by the way your conduct is? How about your choices? Amen. Verse 32, or 34, I'm sorry. Do not what? Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. It's called the sword of the Spirit. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's a powerful saying from Jesus. And he who loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's why we sever emotional attachments with all of our children, our family, and so forth. And he who does not take up his cross, that is called the sword. Amen? When you pull the cross out of the ground, it becomes a sword. And he who does not take up his sword, his cross, and follow after me is not worthy of me. That means there's a fight to follow. He who finds his life will what? Lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's why when, after many people get delivered, healed, and so forth, they, that enemy comes to influence them to want to go back to their life again. They want to build on the things that they lost. Not realizing that God is a replacer. <laughs> and let me tell you, when he replaces, it's got a lifetime guarantee. I'd rather get it from him than from my own hands. Amen? So we want him to establish, not us. We stay out of the way as much as possible. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. So he just said, look at me, and I didn't come to bring peace to the world system. That's going to continue. He says we'll always have wars, right? But the sword of the Spirit is to battle spiritual realm that influence physical realm. And without a battle, without learning how to warfare in the Spirit, your physical part in this realm will be chaos. You'll be easily deceived. You'll be misled, you'll live a life of anxiousness, and you'll make emotional decisions instead of decisions led by the Spirit of God. Amen? In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse 1. 
Hallelujah. Let's speak it, please. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There you are. <laughs> the Word's God. Amen. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Go to verse uh, 10. He was in the world, and the world what? Would not, was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, as accepted him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. In other words, they had access to the outer court. What's the next chamber? Holy place. For as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in him and believe in his name, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. and We beheld his glory to glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth, in other words, he came with a full escape, man. He came with the fullness of truth and that a full escape. Christ was manifested in the world with the plan of grace to escape to anyone willing to follow him. I think that's the main thing, that there's not enough people willing to follow him. Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Jesus gave a powerful command here. And again, if he gives a command, it's not an asking. It's not an asking. It's, it's an area where he's not giving you a choice. Does everybody understand? Even though you have a free will, and you do have a free will to choose, he's saying, look it. I want you to give that up for this. In verse 4, he said, Being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with the Holy Spirit, but you should be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when he had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you time restore the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, it's not time for any of this. For you to know times or seasons or the fathers, but in his own authority. But you shall receive what? Power. Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in what? All Judea, Samaria, and to the what? The end of the earth. Yes. Again, he commanded them to be empowered, overcome with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He commanded them. Go to John 14. This is where many people lack. No power, no dominion. John 14, verse 15. Glory. Let's speak it, please. If you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. Everything he says is a command, I'm going to tell you. And I'll pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Does everybody see that? The world can't receive the Holy Spirit. He only accesses through the blood. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave, your orphan, leave you orphans. I will come to you a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, and you live also. Powerful. 
So we know that there's a comforter. So when, here, here's the important thing is, if people will start going to the comforter instead of the phone, amen, go to the throne. Go to the throne instead of the phone, and you'll be comforted. But the problem is, is people become anxious. And that, well, these things are areas that fear will delay that conversion. Pride will delay that conversion. And the enemy not only comes to steal your identity, but your fullness of conversion and bring you back. And the next thing you know, you're in the same condition you were before. We want to reach the full conversion and then maintain it. Amen? Praise God. John 16, verse 12. Hallelujah. We're at another chapter to the Bible today. <laughs> Glory. John 16, 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I, Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. In other words, you can't get it. Because I speak spirit. I speak words of life. And you can't comprehend it. You may be able to listen to it, but you're not going to get it. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I still have many things to say. Now, verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, he will interpret for you. And he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you what? Things to come. Praise God. It's so, you know, if people were really in fellowship with the Lord, they wouldn't go out and get jabbed. Amen? I mean, think about that. The Holy Spirit has said, no, don't do that. And if they miss it, they got an opportunity to repent and break the curse off. Hallelujah. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Don't you want all the things that the Father has? He's got a warehouse of stuff for you, man. It's loaded. Everything you need is in there. But there's problems with his access. He only releases certain things as you are, fulfill, you are obedient to certain things. So there's a level of fulfillment when he releases also. As you keep pressing it, you don't have to figure out what the level of fulfillment is. Does everybody understand that? You just got to be obedient to keep pressing in. One of the things we got to continue to do is praise and worship. We got to keep sowing in the spirit. If you ain't going to sow, you ain't getting nothing. Amen. That's the price. That's the money. So, till you sow what? Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I want to go to Proverbs 16 instead. <laughs> Is everybody there? Oh, yes. Let's speak it together. The highway of the upright is depart from evil. Now, why wouldn't a person depart from evil? Because they haven't reached the fullness of or a level of conversion. Amen? They're like, duh. You know? He who keeps his way pre preserves his soul. Let's go to 18. Pride, personal reverence into a deadly end, goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Wow. Hmm. He who heeds the word wisely will find good, and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Pride is the delay of conversion. It prevents reaching an area of maturity and also access to the deep things of God or the mysteries of God. If an individual continues in that arena, the veil begins to be returned to them. Their eyes, their heart, their mind, they become hard-hearted. They become blind. They become short-sighted. They become critical of everything. They are unrest. They become double-minded. They're unstable. There's a false peace that begins to begin to take them over, thinking that they're good. 
good, not righteous. Hello? Things begin to change. And it prevents that area of conversion, that full conversion, or delay, or even that person can begin to backslide in that area and the veils can come back on. That's why the Word tells us that there's a regeneration of this conversion by the Holy Spirit. So we can reach a full conversion. In 1 Peter chapter 5. You know, the world is a mess. And the body of Christ needs to be tightened up, cleaned up, and reach a place of full conversion so that we can be the witnesses and carriers of the truth. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Oh, we know this one. Likewise, you younger people do what? Submit to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the what? He resists the proud. In other words, he delays them till they eat some humble pie. But God gives grace, the plan of escape to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. In other words, you're a waiter. You're a seeker. Doesn't matter. Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can what? Devour, mislead. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one that's going through it. Amen. God resists access to the proud, but releases the mysteries and a plan of escape to the humble. Ephesians 5. He says he releases his grace that is bringing the process of fuller conversion. Ephesians chapter 5. Thank you, Master. Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Verse 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators as God's dear children. I mean, come on. God is saying, okay, imitate me. <laughs> and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Never, neither filth, uh, filthiness, nor what? Foolish talking or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous purse man, who is an idolater, has what? Any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Christ and God. In other words, you do not have access if this is the life you practice. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. In other words, you're to seek it out. And have no what? fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifested by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools or idiots, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? The days are evil. 2 Corinthians 5. The page is turning on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. A couple more scriptures. Full conversion. 
Thank you, Master. Verse 16. Second Corinthians, oh, Second Corinthians 5, verse 1, I'm sorry. Let's speak. If we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. And for we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very special thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be present or absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, but to be what? well pleasing to him because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are well known to God and I also trust are well known in your consciences wow we are desire see look at if if you're not uh, don't have a desire to make exchanges you will never reach full conversion. Amen? You must, you must have that desire to make exchanges. Lord, I want to exchange this. Man, I exchange every single day. And then there's things that I got to exchange immediately. Why? Because I don't want to touch and agree with anything that's unclean. I don't want to hear it. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6. We must desire to make an exchange of the old for the new. And we're making a, a, we're entering a whole new realm on a daily basis. Second Corinthians 6. Let's speak it together. What and what agreement has the what? temple of God with idols. For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. If they do what? If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you should be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Is pride unclean? Yeah. Yeah. Don't touch unclean things like items. You, there's items like music, videos, drugs, tobacco, tattooing, pornography, all of those things. But then there's thoughts of agreements also that we don't want to touch. I didn't say they wouldn't come. It's just a matter of touching an agreement with them. Amen? When a person reacts, it means they touch and agreed with something unclean. Because flesh is unclean. Amen? This will cause a delay and denial of access until full repentance. God's willing to turn everything around with full repentance. Amen? But we want a full conversion in everything that we're doing. And I want to close at Romans 8. 28. 8.28. Hallelujah. Full conversion. Let's speak it, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. <clears throat> Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. If God is for us, who can? So things are going to work to the good, to those who love God. That means if you love him, you obey him, right? <clears throat> we want to reach a full conversion in every chamber. There's a process that God is bringing us through. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. It never stops. There's always a process of conversion. Amen? 
And in that conversion, we're being constantly transformed from glory to glory into the image and likeness of Christ Jesus. But it depends on us and our cooperation and submission. If we start fighting for our life again, that delays. And this is where we have to have the discernment and wisdom and understanding of stop fighting for our life and constantly surrendering it. Surrender is power. Amen? To walk away from something that's evil is power. There's a time for everything, but it must be led by the Lord in everything we do. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, Lord. And we ask in this time of season that we are in, Lord, in all the cha challenges and trials and tribulations, that you would guide us by your spirit of truth into the full conversion, and that you would quicken us and convict us, slap us in the back of the head, do whatever you got to do so that we do not fall in a place of delay or denial. Help us, Lord, because without you, we can't do it. So we promise to give you all glory, honor, and praise in this full conversion of every event that you have us going through, that we can become more like you, an image, likeness, character, that the world may see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.